How's it going guys? In this video we're going to do the register page for our Freight Forum website. And um, you can see here I've got some basic stuff here. This is all the information I want for my um, register form this time. And um, you know if we put some stuff in here like my name and I just click register. Um, we're going to get error messages output for everything that was missing. And this is completely done by CodeIgniter. Um, all we're doing is um, setting the rules for it and it's outputting these error messages for us. So we're saving tons of time by using CodeIgniter for doing um, register and login things. Um, you can see if I put in you know, a bit more information, my last name and a country, um, it's just going to show us less errors. And until all of the things check out, this form is not going to be able to be submitted. Um, so what we can do is um, just get a few things in order first. Um, go over to your code and make sure, uh, go into your autoload.php, which is in the config folder and make sure you have your form helper included because if your form helper isn't included then um, you are actually you're going to get errors on your page when you try to use this set value um, because it's not going to recognize this function because this function is part of the form helper um, so make sure you have that included and another thing we want to include is Twitter bootstrap so I'm um, just going to go over to my browser here and you can go to twitter.github.com slash bootstrap and just download bootstrap here and you're going to get a folder of a bunch of different files here and basically the ones that you want is um, bootstrap.css and also um, bootstrap.js so just going to my header here and you'll see that I have um, bootstrap.js included right here and I also have bootstrap.css right there another thing is you want to make sure these are included before your main CSS file that you're writing all your um, CSS into and uh, also this before your main JS file. In my case I have it um, in that one included in the footer and you also see that I've prepended these with the base URL and the base URL is um, it's going to give us an absolute URL here but um, it's a really good way to do your URLs in, um, in CodeIgniter because no matter what folder you're in no matter what controller or wherever you're in you're going to get an absolute URL here and this base URL is being fetched from uh, the config folder and then config.php and you'll see it right here. And actually I don't have it set right now but um, CodeIgniter will actually guess your, um, it will guess your domain um, if you don't have it filled out. So in my case it guessed correctly so I just left it as is for right now but um, it's probably a bit better to actually put that in there. Um, let's just go back to the code here now and I'm going to go over to my register form and um, nothing too special here. We open the form right here. Um, CodeIgniter, CodeIgniter also has its own uh, methods for you know outputting uh, the form tag and the inputs and stuff like that but they're not really necessary. Um, but one that is really useful is for your um, value for first name or last name or anytime people need to type something in, set the value to this CodeIgniter function right here which is echoing out the set value and what this is going to do is if somebody had something wrong with their form um, it is when they get sent back to the form to fill it out again it's going to remember their first name, it's going to remember their last name uh, so they're not need, going to need to type that out again so that's um, just going to save them a bunch of time uh, we can go down to the bottom here and um, don't think there's anything too, mu too much else to talk about here Oh, one thing is, um, you'll see at the bottom underneath my form tag, I'm echoing out validation errors. And uh, what this is going to do is, this is showing all of those errors that you just saw in red. And they're being output inside p-tags, and they're also being given, given the class of error. So what I did was, um, in my main.css file, um, I'm not sure where I put it in here, but basically uh, we have, um, I can just search it here, search for error. And you can see that I've just given a color of red, a font size, and given a font weight of bold. And you could, you know, you could stylize your error um, however you wanted to. So um, let's just go, um, let's go over to our register controller here. So this whole form is being submitted to a method in my register controller. And you can see it right here, register user. And the first thing we're doing is I'm loading in my form validation li library. Now I could also auto load this form validation library inside um, autoload.php so I could put it in right here but um, 
I just, you know, if I think if you're going to use a library on every page of your site or almost every page of your site, then um, you'll want to auto load it. But if it's only going to be used in a, a few different places, um, I think it's better just to um, include it right within your controller. So that will probably, you know, save you a bit of processing time on other pages um, where, you know, it's not loading in the form validation library if it doesn't need it. But in this case, we need it here inside this method. So I'm loading it in like this. And after we load this um, form validation library, we can access all of its methods and properties um, using this and then form validation. And the first one I'm using is this set rules right here. And the way that set rules works is first you put in the um, name of your input or whatever it was, so first name. So you'll see in the, um, the view register here, um, for example, email, uh, this input right here, it has a name of email. And that is going to match up with what we put inside our um, register user function right here. We have first name, last name, country, etc. And in the second parameter, you're going to put the human readable value here. So what this is for is when the error message gets output to the person, we're not going to show them like first name. We're going to show them this in a human readable value. And then the third parameter is a string that you pass in and it's all of your rules uh, separated by a pipe character and these are going to be run one by one going from left to right um, looking to see if they validate or not so I'm running I'm first doing the trim function on whatever they gave me and then uh, I'm making sure it's a required field so if they didn't submit it then uh, the validation is going to fail you should have a minimum length of 3 a maximum length of 14 and we're also checking for um, if they did any SQL injection on it. And we do that with XSS underscore clean. And you can find all of these different rules on CodeIgniter's uh, documentation in their, um, in their form validation page there. So um, the last name is similar, just uh, same kind of rules right here. You can set them however you want. Um, for the country, because it's a select tag, I'm just using required here. Just needs to be submitted. In the next one for email, um, we are checking that it's a valid email. We just do that with valid underscore email. And we're also checking um, this is unique right here. And I think this is the most interesting of all of them. Um, basically what you do here is you put is unique and then you put square brackets after that. And then you're going to put the table name, which is users in my case, and then dot the field. So table dot field users.email and you'll see that um, if I go over to my database right here um, I have a users table and it has um, the email field right here and we have this entry uh, with my email right here so if somebody tried to register um, with my email address just go over to uh, the form right here I'm actually just going to put in um, the one that's already in there You'll see that red that's coming up. That's from Twitter Bootstrap because it's just checking that it's not um, a valid email in there. I'm just going to click register here. And you'll see that the email address field must contain a unique value. Now, that's not very user friendly. Um, I don't think people are going to understand that. But you could also, you know, customize this email address to, you know, say that email is already registered. You know, please choose another email. The next rule we're looking at is for the passwords. And you'll see I have the name of the password here. And inside the validation rules, we have matches, and then in square brackets, we have password underscore conf. And what this is going to do is, it is going to check, did this password one match what was put into password conf? And if it didn't match the um, string value of password conf, then we're going to send them back to the login form, and then we're going to let them know that the passwords didn't match. So I'm just going to type like uh, 123456, and then just type something else and conf confirm password and click register. And you'll see that the password field does not match um, the confirmed password field there. So basically, this is the number one reason to use CodeIgniter. Um, just this form validation stuff right here is going to save you so much time. And it's also, you know, probably going to do a better job than we are at um, doing this kind of validation. Um, so all of the, if all of these rules check out here, then this uh, method right here, this form validation run, this is going to return true. So if true is equal to false, well, that's false. Um, then we are going to, um, you know, we're going to send them back to the, the register form right here. So if the user didn't validate, they get sent back there. 
and we can show them the error message. So after all of these have been checked, we are going to come down to this if block right here. And if all of these were true, there's no problem with them, then form validation uh, and then arrow run, this is going to return true. And if this is true, then we're actually we're going to go down to this block right here and we're going to show them the successful register page. Because if true is equal to false, well, then this is all going to evaluate to false and then we're going to jump down here. But if there was some problems, then this is going to be false. False is equal to false. And then we're going to send them back to the register form here and we're going to show them their error messages and they're going to keep filling it out until um, they get it right and then we can send them to the success page. So let's just go back to the form here and let's um, let's put a country in here and we'll add in a new email that we haven't used yet and let's put in some matching passwords right here and I think everything should be good now. Let's click register and then they get sent to the success page. So in the next movie I'm going to show you how we can um, insert them into the database and um, maybe we'll do a login form too. So see you then.